morning everybody at least it's morning for me here getting some early morning practice in at a um, busy weekend our second alpha challenge in Eagle our birthday um, some changes to event number three and even though we coach you know the alpha bow hunting system a little different style of, of mindset for you know uh, one your your first shot out of the bow this morning you know I I guess let me back up you know um, support the guys at rock slide Robbie and the crew great crew I know they uh, they do the cold bow challenge I believe what it's called and it's not that I don't agree with that I do I really like that because it makes it it shows you that you're thinking about things you're getting yourself ready you're con you're taking all things into account hopefully right um, did a little sh one shot challenge myself this morning 70 yards I don't uh, I'm about an inch under the dot I don't um, I don't believe that your maximum range as I've mentioned before on the videos in this channel uh, is ideal for every shot situation um, something you work towards, something you work to get better at. Shots in your last third of your effective range are, you need to consider um, all the moving parts. So, this morning, like I said, not that I'm uh, not posting this as a cold bow challenge. This is just kind of more the beginning of this, this week's vlog, kind of uh, process and continuation of getting ready for my hunts this year. Shooting this morning again. Uh, I, over the last five days, I've only shot twice. So, wanted to get that first arrow out down range. Wasn't super happy with the testing the effective range a uh, week and a half or so that I did that two weeks ago, week and a half ago. So, really trying to work that middle to last third of my effective range. Uh, I'm going to be doing some, if I can, it, it snowed the last few days here, it's the last day in rain. So, I'm going to try to get some kneeling shots in and seated shots in in that last third this morning <clears throat> as I practice and work on um, the three D's a little bit more. The the bags, the block, the spots, like I said, I kind of like to make sure pins are sighted in and get, get gauged for that. Um, but I really want to practice on the three D's a little bit more. So that's what's going to happen this morning. In addition to that, this these next few days, what I'm looking to try to do is get to uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, look at the uh, harvest data harvest maps if you will they have maps where they uh, document they pinpoint where people have harvested goats in the past and I know I can get online I've looked online already found some some drainages and some kind of general landmark points um, for previous years success so it's a good starting point I'm gonna start looking at the maps the other thing I want to let people know is as I get ready for this hunt a lot of conversations over the weekend in Eagle, Colorado at our second Alpha Challenge. Um, great time. I, I really enjoy the mountain events when we go out there and do that because I get to socialize a little bit more with the competitors and, and talk and learn and, and um, gauge the way people feel about certain things. But what I really wanted to talk about here this morning for a second was premium tags like sheep, like goat, like moose in Colorado. I... There's, there's a group of people that usually are very willing to help out, okay? Obviously deer and elk, you know, even pronghorn, it's hard to give away honey holes sometimes and in consistent spots. However, as I get forward, get move forward with the preparation for this mountain goat hunt, I am going to be it, it, disclosing where I'm going. I'm going to tell you what units I'm hunting. This is a unit, this is a type of hunt I may never get to do in Colorado again, or if I do, it's gonna be a long time away. Is there friends of mine that are close to drawing? Sure, is there, I mean, do my kids potentially have a chance to draw a tag? Sure, it's a long way away still. So to think that a unit that I'm gonna scout, that I'm gonna prepare for, that I'm gonna visit, um, is gonna be the same in five, seven, 10, 15, 20 years, it's it's, it's uh, probably not the case okay so that being said this and I if I take some some scrutiny or, or heat for being 
very open about what unit I'm gonna be hunting. It is what it is, okay? I don't, I don't care because if there's a guy or girl that draws this tag next year, or heck, maybe as you watch some of these videos, maybe you, you're drawn this year. Um, maybe we can get together at some point and, and share information and talk because at the end of the day, these type of premium tags carry a little more pressure. They carry a little bit more um, expectations and it's it's my goal just to do the best I can and help others that may come across the same tag down the, in the future to be successful so that being said like I said this week I'm gonna be getting a little bit more in-depth a little bit less maybe video from the vlog standpoint on the shooting side a little bit more on the scouting and preparation side I'm not sure if, if Parks and Wildlife will let me uh, video or take any pictures of what we come across there but I'm gonna try and at least, um, if I can't, I'll at least give you the recap of what, what that would look like or what, what I was able to gather. So anyway, I'm gonna continue on with some shooting this morning. Wanted to take a, a Robbie Denning shot here. Like I said, um, this morning I just plugged one out at 70 yards and I will start to progressively work that back. And it may be, you know, throughout the, the process, I just come out and take a kneeling shot at 70, 80 yards, 90 yards. Um, as I just, like I said, continue the preparation. So anyway, thanks for following along. We're gonna get into, gonna get a little bit more in depth, get our fingers into that whole um, breaking down some maps, breaking down some access points, and getting ready for this mountain goat hunt. So stay tuned. All right, so I've <laughs> about four groups down range now. It's 60 yards, kneeling shots. I haven't shot very many kneeling or seated shots at distance in a while. So, first group is terrible, not gonna lie. A couple takeaways, I'm gonna show you here. So this is my fourth group. And this is, the last two groups have been pretty consistent with this, okay? Getting three or four arrows really, really good, and one not so good. And you can see that a little better perspective there. I mean that's a good seven inches or so off the spot what's happening is as you're shooting what was shooting in a seated and kneeling position does is it just takes a lot of your stability away core um, is huge here the other thing in addition to that is your bow arm I mean the combination of your st your your bow stability with your body stability if you're not really focused on keeping that bow arm in place and a good follow through this is what happens okay so that was my fourth shot that was not my last shot so just know that you need to work on that focus on it from time to from from every shot that you shoot in um these awkward position shots so like i said i know i told you i was going to do more of the the map stuff but i just a little short takeaway this morning as i was practicing it just was smacking me in the face that first round it was like shotgun then it got a little tighter, and the last couple rounds have been been better, but still not perfect. So that's why that's why I'm practicing. That's why I'm working this. And like I said, this is 60 yards. So to think that those last third shots, and and again myself, I've I've been in that 85 to 95 yard max adjusted range as I've tested in the past. So this is the two thirds marker for the most part, and this is that distance I should be spot on every time. Not quite there yet. We're working on it though. I'm gonna keep plugging. So I'm continuing here with uh, kind of the homework portion of the mountain goat prep. And I mentioned before on the on some on a video while I was shooting outside that I was gonna go make a trip to Parks and Wildlife. Um, you know, I, I shot my ram, my bighorn sheep here in Colorado a few years back. And in that process, when you check your animal in, they take all kinds of measurements. They take, um, the, you know, they age the animal. They put they put a, a marker, a plug in the in the in the animal's horn, and and they make you pinpoint on a map where you harvested the animal. So in my thinking, I said, well, maybe I can go look at the same, similar type of maps from mountain goats and get some get some intel, right? Get some information. Where, where have animals been killed in that unit? Uh, where, uh, where are more hunters hunting? Where are less hunters hunting? 
was trying to get some of that information because obviously I've got some maps. I've been looking at Onyx and started to reach out and network to a few people and try to get some information, people that know the unit. I've already mentioned before that um, sometimes people take this type of hunt and they keep it secretive. You know, I understand elk and deer and even pronghorn. Um, people don't want to give too much intel. And in this respect, I may or may not ever draw another mountain goat tag. I don't know. Um, you know, obviously my kids are just going to be able to start getting put in in a few years. I've got buddies that potentially might draw. But I, I'm not going to be secretive as to this process because as I start getting into access points, driving up through trailheads to get two trailheads to try to hike in for an access point and see, hey, which, which spots work better than others, good glassing areas, and just bringing you through the process with me, it's kind of stupid to try to be secretive, in my opinion, towards things. So if you are familiar with the maps, if not, you want to check, if you're interested, I drew G1 and 14 in uh, here in Colorado, and that's basically uh, west, kind of west, northwest of Salida, and there's some 14, there's some big mountains in there, some 14ers, um, a lot of 13,003 to 13,007 foot, 100 foot peaks, um, there's some big mountains, at, at least upon initial in, inspection. I elk hunt in a unit bordering uh, these units, so I can sometimes glass from certain points, but I, I'm not very close, right? So I've, I've seen long range layout, if you will, on some of these mountains. I know very little bit about this unit so far. So I pick up the phone and uh, call Parks and Wildlife and I say, hey, I know this process because when I sh shot my RAM, I called in the info, or I had to go in, they documented the info, I've looked online, and, and all they do online is they give you drainages, if you will, of harvest locations. So looking at the last few years and some, some of the harvests, uh, as this is a, they give, I believe, around six tags a year. It's an archery-only unit, either sex tags, and it looked like it was four or five of the six tags got failed last year. I can't remember. I looked for, through quite a few years' worth of data. But they only give you drainages, right? Basins, if you're not even basins, it's just a drainage. It's a general creek drainage. And maybe this map that I'm using or the maps I've used don't really uh, map out that drainage per se very well. But I, I called him and said, hey, can I come and look at your maps? No, we don't allow that. He said, what's the point of the maps? Well, it's for their wildlife biologists, okay? So coincidentally, that next day I got an email from... Parks and Wildlife because they don't they usually do their sheep and goat symposium you go and you sit in on on uh, identification of animals trying to identify the sex making sure you know what's legal what's not field prep I missed going to that when I drew my sheep tag I had something else going on and so they're not doing it anymore they're doing it online they basically have everything recorded so I'm going to show you here switch over to the to the laptop screen and they basically have all this info on YouTube and on their website. So you've got, you know, some of the basics, your, your sheep hunting identification, mountain goat hunting identification. <clears throat> um, some of your kind of 101 courses, your basic stuff. I've li I listened to some of the, uh, some of these videos already. And, and you know, it's, it's good general information. Um, you know, the hunting rags, uh, you know, it, you should be able to take your time and look through the brochure and read through there and have a good idea of what you should and should not do. Okay? It's, it's, I'm not saying it's black and white, but it's pretty freaking black and white. You know, the one video here. When trying to differentiate between a billy and a nanny, there are three main things you're going to be looking at. Horns, body, and behavior. This video is actually one done by, uh, narrated by Steve Ranella, and it's a pretty good video. It gives some some good pictures and and some um, uh, diagrams and it shows, you know things to look for. Things and I, obviously I'm I'm no seasoned mountain goat hunter by any means. So this type of information, in some respects, is basic. Okay, but at the same token, applying it into the field is where it gets complicated. 
you know, they can simplify it and try to help us out to identify species, identify age class, and um, or not species, but uh, male or gender, and, and then age class. But at the end of the day, it's being able to take this, take what you've learned, you've read, the pictures you've seen, what, what people have taught you, apply it to the field, and break that down to see if you're going to move forward for a possible shot opportunity. So anyway, as I continue with the mountain goat prep, um, I'm, I'm not looking for somebody to do the work for me, okay? But however, knowing what's out there, knowing what Parks and Wildlife has and what they're willing to disclose and what they're not willing to disclose, up to this point, a little bit disappointed, okay? I do have the phone number for the uh, local uh, Parks and Wildlife office that, re that, that manages that area. I'm going to go uh, continue with that, call them up, see if I can get some additional information, um, talk to any of the wardens on hand. And, and again, try to break this down because this this specific unit, and if you look on again G1, G14, from access points to mountains to where you're going, it's it's big. Anytime you get up there where there's 13, 14,000 foot peaks, it's big mountains. Okay, so again, I'm not looking for somebody to pinpoint on the map and tell me go here, you'll shoot this age class billy or whatever. Not not looking for that, but I'd like to see, you know, hey. The numbers of goats tend to be stronger in this, this, and this mountain range area, uh, less in this area. Uh, this is a little bit more rugged terrain, so if you want to potentially spend some time there, uh, you may get lucky and see some larger uh, age class animals, but maybe less animals hang out there. Those kind of generalizations, but still, how do I say it? Not a specific generalization, right? But there's some educated generalization so that way I can look at the map and say hey I'm gonna go in on a scouting trip these two trailheads lead to this certain ridge line and I can try to get access from any of these points to where um, you know I might be able to hike up a couple miles and get to a glassing point and if I don't see a whole bunch I can hike back down drive around to another access point go around the mountain and, and glass some other areas so those are the kind of details and information I'm looking for at this point because there's still a lot of snow it's it's end of May still right now uh, snowed again here last week and I don't know that I'm gonna even be able to get too high up there I'm looking to try to actually make my first trip up there um, towards the end of June uh, might take a, a day trip uh, here in the middle of June just to kind of get to some some of the lower roads access points kind of see what type of terrain we're looking at and then actually I could get boots on the ground and hike up a little bit more towards the end of the month. And at that point, end of June, early July, I mean, uh, it's not a whole bunch of time, you know, between then and season. Obviously, with the shop, it's peak season at the shop. So I got to spend a lot of time helping out there, helping the customer out, customers out to make sure they're ready for their big game hunt. So I'm going to wrap this video up and just say that the early prep and um, research, if you will, is um, no better than the process I took to actually apply for this unit, which is pretty much point, you know, throwing a dart at a dart board that I'm not very good at throwing darts at and just randomly seeing where it's at. So a lot of randomness, um, the videos, the generalizations, I mean, excuse me, the, the, the basic information on the Parks and Life website is good. Uh, it, uh, again, it's basic. And... Um, not super specific. So I'm going to continue going out of that process and let's just see where it ends up because at the end of the day, this, this whole journey is, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking for somebody to hand me anything, but it's, it just goes to show you with, uh, kind of like even with me disclosing where I'm going to be hunting. Hey, I'm sure there might be some anti hunter out there that follows my vehicle around and wants to go, you know, play music or, or, whatever bang drums in a certain area that I might end up trying to be at, which that's, that's your deal. But, uh, I don't know. It, it, it seems like, um, like I said, as much documentation, as much information is out there, it's still very secretive. So maybe I just haven't found the right people yet that will, will help me get some of that other, uh, second level, if you will, information. So, uh, keep following along. We're going to keep tracking the journey and we'll see you guys soon.